My mom recently sent me an article that she saw online about an herbal supplement called berberine. I had never heard of it, so I started sort of Googling and looking around, and I have to be honest with you, I'm a little intrigued. Now, you guys know me. I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, by the way. Hello, guys. I'm a practicing family physician, on-air health expert, and video creator. I've done a lot of videos on vitamins and supplements, and I've often talked about some of the cautions that we must have when sort of thinking about approaching vitamins and supplements. But I have to say berberine did and has caught my interest. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you what some of the proposed benefits of berberine are. I'm also going to tell you about some of the risks and maybe how to approach um, this particular supplement if it's something you have thought about. We're also going to talk about berberine and diabetes slash metformin. There is talk on the Googler Schmoogler about, hey, should you just be ditching your metformin and take berberine instead? I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So first of all, let's talk about what berberine is. It's a supplement, okay? Um, it's a quaternary ammonia compound that's found in many botanicals. Some examples of these are golden seal, um, barber, Oregon grape and tree turmeric. There's others as well. This again is according to the NIH. Uh, berberine has been used historically in Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine, I'm sure, and other uh, types of medicine throughout the years for a number of things. So this is not a new sort of substance that we've come across. This is something that many people throughout the world have used for, for different things. It's been used for things like infection, um, gastrointestinal issues, whether it's diarrhea or stomach upset or things like that, bronchitis, many other things um, berberine has been used for. But that sort of brings us back to the topic at hand, which is, okay, that may be how it's been traditionally used um, throughout the ages. Um, you know, how can we and how should we and should we be using it now? Um, first of all, let me talk about um, what I found when I actually sort of did a search to see kind of what studies and data was out there. I have to say I was impressed because oftentimes with supplements or herbals, botanicals, etc., um, you know, when you're searching, you, you may not find a lot of studies. I found a lot more than I found thought I would. And I have to say, um, that does impress me. Now, um, they're not necessarily all high quality and all good studies, but there were a lot more studies than I realized there would be. According to, to many of the studies that have been published over the years, berberine has been uh, claimed to have a number of benefits, um, antimicrobial uh, benefits, um, antioxidant properties, like dealing with inflammation, stuff like that, uh, anti-proliferative, um, even sometimes anti-cancer, and, and others as well. Um, berberine has been uh, claimed to lower blood sugar, to improve um, uh, insulin resistance, to lower cholesterol, uh, to um, improve cognition, uh, how we think, how we process information, et cetera, in some studies, to lower inflammation, even to potentially fight cancer in some studies. And there are plenty of other benefits that studies have shown. Once again, let me go back to this concept of, you know, not every study out there that has been done is a good study or a well-powered study. Um, and that is, you know, really sort of how we in, in the West, how we make decisions about medications, et cetera. I should also say, and by the way, this is not a medication. This is a supplement, uh, botanical, et cetera. Um, I should also say, though, and be very clear, this is not approved for use for um, sort of any sort of uh, treatment in the United States. This is not an FDA-approved drug or medication. I want to be very clear. This is um, a supplement, an herbal, a botanical, something along those lines, okay? Okay. Now, um, there can be side effects to berberine. I mean, there can be side effects to anything. And, you know, I'm really transparent about this. There can and often are side effects to prescription medications, to pharmaceuticals, but there can also be side effects to, um, you know, supplements, vitamins, uh, herbs, etc. And some of the side effects um, given for this are GI symptoms, whether that's sort of nausea or diarrhea, upset stomach, constipation, bloating, things like that. Um, as with sort of any supplements or vitamins and potentially medications, prescription, there can be drug interactions, right? There can be interactions between the supplement and prescription medications you're taking. There can be interactions between the supplement and other supplements or vitamins or herbals that you might be taking. Um, there are potentially other side effects as well, right? We don't know all of them. And once again, you know, this is not an FDA approved pharmaceutical drug. And what that means is that it's not uh, regulated um, as tightly by the Food and Drug Administration as it would be if it were a prescription drug. Um, I've done plenty of videos about some of the potential dangers when it comes to vitamins and supplements. 
Um, but some of the things we have to remember is that with vitamins and supplements, um, because they're not regulated the same as pharmaceutical drugs uh, by the FDA, there may be other ingredients in there, or there may be variation of active ingredient from pill to pill, even within the same bottle. Um, oftentimes it means we don't know fully what um, the positive or negative effects of the supplement is because often because you know they're not regulated, we don't have a lot of studies about them. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, okay? So you have to know this and you can go to FDA.gov and read this yourself. You know, is berberine, and I talked about the, the potential benefits, right? I, I, let's just remind ourselves of what those potentially are. What I say, lowering cholesterol, lowering blood sugar, improving insulin resistance, probably co possibly cognition, um, uh, uh, possibly cancer and, and other things. Those are some big claims. And it's caused some people, and, and some studies in particular have caused people to, to say, well, hey, you know, uh, metformin and berberine might be more similar than we thought. Uh, maybe it's possible for some people to actually not take their metformin and take berberine instead. Now I'm taking us down a whole nother road and there's a bit more to this, but I wanted to also touch on that. Um, there is a question on the internet. If you put in berberine, you'll often see metformin pop up. It's because, um, you know, scientists have suggested that they often uh, share features, both metformin and berberine. And so they are often compared. Some people have often wondered, as I mentioned, if they can stop their metformin and just do the berberine supplement. Um, this is what I would say, though, uh, not only to that question, but to the question of should you take berberine in general? What should you do, right? Should you take it? There's a few things we have to keep in mind. What I would say is we need more studies and we need better powered and better quality studies to make like sort of firm conclusions about the efficacy and um, how berberine operates and how it does these things, if it does these things in who and who not, et cetera. Um, I would also remind us to remember some of the interactions that can have, et cetera, et cetera. I also want to remind us that, you know, I don't want you stopping anything that your doctor has advised you to do or prescribe for you um, to take something else without your doctor's advice. So when it comes down to the simple question of, should, say, should I stop my metformin to take berberine? Well, I don't want you stopping anything to take something else without talking with your doctor. And that's a rule, like I said, sort of applies across the board. Do I think that this is a slam dunk, berberine? No, I don't. I still think we have more to learn. I think it's very promising what I'm seeing. And I, again, I've seen more data than I thought I would, but I do think we need more trials, better quality trials. And look, you know, I never say never. Could uh, we get more data um, that comes up in the wash and we change the way we practice in terms of cholesterol and diabetes and stuff in the future? Sure, but right now, berberine is not FDA approved for the treatment of these things. It is not a FDA regulated uh, prescription drug in the United States. And we have to keep that in mind. We have to remember that that's simply a fact, okay? What what I would say, though, is that if you're interested in trying this, if you're saying, well, you know what, Dr. Jen, I just really want to give it a try, you know, look, I say it's totally okay to want to try something. This is where you go talk to your doctor and you say, hey, look, I saw this. I read about this. What do you think? So that your doctor can talk with you about what medications you're on, what underlying conditions you have. Sometimes uh, supplements and vitamins, and things like that can cause problems simply because of the underlying conditions we have. So you got to talk to your doctor. But, you know, once again, I've said this before, I, I, I'm keeping an open mind about this. Hopefully we'll get more data in the future. I do think we'll probably hear more about this. But right now um, I say stick with your doctor's recommendations. If you have questions, you want to try something new, ask your doctor and, uh, you know, see if it's right for you to give it a try. Um, I hope this is helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you tried berberine or if you had this conversation with your doctor. Um, I'm Dr. Jen Caudill, practicing family physician, on-air health expert and video creator. On Facebook, please like and follow my page. On YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. And uh, everyone, please go to my website, drjencaudill.com. You can sign up for my free health newsletter and also check out uh, Dr. Jen's daily health tips. That's my new offering on my website. Guys, I'll see you soon.